Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to the service this morning, which is morning prayer from the BCP. Now we're back here in church again uh, this week, which is wonderful and it's lovely to look down and see actual live people. So uh, it's, it's very, very nice to see you here and welcome back. And uh, then of course, our normal Sunday welcome then to those who are watching us online, especially from far flung places of the world. Now, the only notice that we have this week for the church is that we have the diocesan, or we have the, the monthly magazine is, is ready, and it, it has been sent uh, in email, and it will be posted this week to anybody who's not on email or who would like a hard copy of it. So we continue our wor worship this morning, having looked at what we're going to do, uh, and we say, to, we, we say together the, the uh, confession. Let us confess our sins to God our Father, saying together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, uh, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and we repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And the absolution. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. The Lord and the Canticle Venite, verses 1 to 7, which we say together. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it, his hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And we sit now for our first reading. The first reading is from Romans chapter 13, beginning at verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves one another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, 
not in debauchery and lichiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the psalm appointed for today is Psalm 149, and we say it by alternate verse. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing his praises in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their faith. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord has pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with salvation. Let the faithful be joyful in glory. Let them rejoice in their ranks. With the praises of God in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings in chains and their nobles with fetters of honor. To execute on them the judgment decreed, such honor have all his faithful servants. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. And we remain seated for our second reading. It is taken from the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 18, beginning to read at the 15th verse. <clears throat> if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle this morning is the Canticle Jubilate, which we say together and we stand. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth, Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God, it is he who has made us. We are his people and the sheep of his people. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. The Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I was thinking that in my lifetime, in about 50 years, 50, 60 years, the, the whole feeling of society has changed so enormously. If you look back at Ireland or the world in, in sort of the 1950s, you will find that it was in, in some ways a very innocent, following two world wars sounds unlikely, but we were very innocent in the way that we looked at things, I think. And we were very, we were very bold in many ways. Uh, we, we didn't see problems, we just pushed them aside. And it's, as, as, we, as we've gone along, we've become more sophisticated. So, I mean, the period I'm talking about, you know, we saw the abolishment of capital punishment, the abolishment of corporal punishment. We see the fact that people understand that people may get pregnant without having a husband and that they not necessarily have to be locked up, that other people don't have to be locked up because we don't understand them and because we're afraid of them. All those things have changed. We have become much more kind in many ways and much more sophisticated. But at the same time, having lost our innocence, we are much more afraid. Hence all these insurance claims and all that sort of stuff. And you would have seen all the tremendous feeling about people sending children back to school this week. And they were very much afraid, very much afraid, which I would think perhaps if you go back to the 50s and 60s, you know, when people used to say to their children, off you go to school then, that's six miles down the road on your own, just don't knock about much and come back. And we never bothered and people didn't bother. And, and that's just the way it was. So we've lost that. But if you bring COVID into the equation, then, what we have is we become more caring, but we become much more excitable. We become much more uptight, if that's a good word. It's not really. Um, it's you become, we're, we're, more, we're more frightened. So we react more. When we're frightened, we tend to sh put out. You only have to see what happened to Golfgate last week. I mean, it was sheer, just disgrace, rage. And we have only just started. COVID is coming again, probably, maybe a little wave, probably. But, and COVID itself is, is not a nice disease. We know it's a horrible disease. And all those things is true. But the economic COVID, which is coming after it, which will be there for 2021, is going to be much more difficult for us to take, be much more pressure on us as a, as a whole unit. And the cake is only one size, might even be getting smaller. And we'd all be looking for a bit. And we'll all be saying, or we may well be saying, that our bit's more important than their bit. That's why we have to remember our Christian values all the time, but particularly at this time. Yes, we're reaching out to COVID people, but we will be pressured, we will be stretched, we will be pushed far more than we believe possible, I think, for us to lose our cool, to lose our Christianity, to lose our kindness and our generosity. We have to show great kindness and love to everyone through all the tensions that are going to come and will be for some considerable time. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be as is most justly due all might, majesty, dominion, power and adoration, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. We stand now to affirm the faith which will give us the courage and all that we need to do what we need to do in these difficult times. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And renew us by your And the collect of this, the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we say the first collect of morning prayer together. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all the souls of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer, praying first of all for the church gathered throughout the world. Unchanging God, change us from the heart until the whole church awakes to your love that reaches out nurtures, celebrates, neither holding back from what is difficult, nor rushing in where angels fear to tread. We pray for sensitivity and courage. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, give us such love for the world that we may pray with longing and desire, your kingdom come. Give our leaders the grace to see their work as service and their role as stewards, and sharpen both the recognition of needs and the commitment to just provision. We pray, Lord, for those who are hungry this day throughout the world. We pray for those who try to feed them. We remember that we must be kind and generous and compassionate. And we must ask these things of those who lead us and guide us. We pray for the Yemen, for they're very hungry. Somalia, South Sudan, Afghanistan, all the places, Lord, where there's so much trouble. And we continue our prayers for the people of Beirut as they clear up after that explosion. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, break all habits of destructive behavior in our homes and families and in our friendships and in all the homes of this parish. Develop our ability to celebrate what is good and to face what is not with honesty. And as we think of this, we pray, Lord, for our families and for those we love. And we think particularly of our teenage children today as they await their Leaving Cert results. We pray for them, Lord, that you will guide them, that you will, they will know your presence in the comfort that they receive, not just from you, but from those around them, and the encouragement. And we pray for all teachers, all support, school support staff, all those who work to educate our children. Lord, in your mercy. In your Healing God, lay your hands on those who suffer so that they may know the support of your presence and find wholeness and peace in your love. 
We pray especially for those who are receiving treatment at this time, those who are anxiously awaiting results of tests, and all those, Lord, who have long and debilitating illnesses. We pray for them and for those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray too, Lord, for the farming community here in Ireland at this time. We thank you for the goodness of your love. We ask your blessing on them at what is a difficult time of harvest. And as we think of our own harvest being diminished with the weather, we think of those whose harvests have failed completely. We ask you to fill our hearts with generosity and kindness and to support our farmers and their families here at home. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, in your unchanging love, receive all those who have died in faith, that they may rejoice in you forever. We say together, merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to our prayer of dismissal, and we turn to the leaflet and we say together, Grant, O Lord, that the word which we hear this day may so take root in our hearts, that we, living in accordance with your holy will, may ever praise and magnify your glorious name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we bless God and we bless each other in the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. And thank you for joining us this, uh, this morning in our service, and we wish you a, a blessed week. Amen. Amen.